yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mood616, and I'm back in the house for another DVD slash Blu-ray update. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be everything I picked up since about the mid, since mid-September, I believe, is the last time I did my update. Uh, I haven't really got much in the last, like, week or anything. I actually intended to do this update a couple weeks ago. Um, unfortunately, I had a couple things happen in my schedule that just kind of threw me for a loop, and it just kept getting pushed until right now. Unfortunately, I am sick, so I do apologize for my voice and the lack of enthusiasm. But, no, it's it's still kind of there. But uh, I've been sitting around watching football all day trying to get better. So, uh, But, yeah, it's later Sunday night, and... Um, I don't know, let's just get right into this update, man. I got a lot of stuff here. Uh, fair amount of DVDs, you know, kind of normal portion, but I got a lot of Blu-rays to get through and a lot of great stuff. So um, I know people that aren't really interested in the DVDs. It seems like everyone's like, just get to the fucking Blu-rays. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, there still is things that, you know, you got to buy on DVD um, because that's the way to get them. So, uh, but yeah, without further ado, starting off first up here, uh, I picked up this bus um, of fucking Vincent Price, man. This was actually a really interesting find. I didn't know that Rue Morg had put this out, and I thought it was um, an exclusive when I found it. it. even said kind of exclusive on the box and stuff, but apparently they sell them in stores, so uh, because my local Sunrise Records actually had one, and at first I was like weirded out. I'm like, why do they have this in here? But then I remembered that they actually sell the magazine in there too, So because I've had a subscription to Rue Morg for rough, probably over 10 years now, so I uh, didn't know where you could actually buy the magazine, but uh, yeah, this is really cool, man. This Vincent Price little bus, I think it's freaky as shit, and it's good quality, man. Really heavy and good shit, man. Can hang it up there if you want, but yeah, this is really cool, man. Just an interesting find. Wasn't looking for it and just came across it, so yeah, awesome. All right, let's get into the DVDs. First couple things up here are from Scream Team releasing. These three movies actually do have Blu-rays, but it's just really, really ex expensive for me to import them from the website because that's where you have to get them. Uh, they're like $20 American for the Blu-rays plus the shipping conversion. It works out to like 50 bucks, man. So DVDs, I'll pay gladly pay like $10, $12 a piece for these. So yeah. Uh, first up, Close Calls. And there there will be a bunch of stuff in here, obviously, that, uh, that are reviewed for the 31 days of horror because I do buy a lot of stuff specifically for the 31 days because that's just what I do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Close Calls, this is one that I reviewed on the 31 days of horror and really enjoyed this. It's kind of like a love letter to Italian cinema, uh, really kind of on the psychological tip, um, really interesting, you know, uh, cinematography, colors. Um, it's it's a trip, man. It's a trip. It, the thing about this movie that's interesting, you know, it runs two hours, but there's a lot here, though. There is a lot going on. Uh, I know that runtime might scare you off a little bit, but it's definitely worth the time. I think it's really interesting, but um, you want the full review, go check out the review on 31 Days of Horror, but uh, Close Calls, enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed that one. Also reviewed this one, too. Murder Made Easy. Sorry, the white never seems to pick up well because I have a huge light, <laughs> as you guys can probably tell because my face has color now. It's not just white. Uh, Murder Made Easy. Um, this one I thought was really cool, man. It's kind of, it definitely takes its in inspiration from like Agatha Christie. It's kind of set in all one spot. It's about these, you know, these two people doing this dinner party and people are dying. Um, full review on the channel if you want to check it out. I thought it was a pretty interesting film. Um, actually, the director actually contacted me and thanked me personally for you know doing the review and stuff and he, he said he was actually worried about um you know what I was going to say about the film because he saw the intro and he's like oh my intro is all full of blood and gore and all nastiness and shit and this movie really doesn't have any blood and gore and he's like uh oh <laughs> but that's not how I roll man I, I like all sorts of movies so but Murder Made Easy cool film from Scream Team and of course this one also Bong of the Living Dead um Man, that light really, it's really hard to, you can't really see the face, it's gone there, can you? That's fucked up. Um, but Bong and the Living Dead, uh, this one fell short, man. This one really, really fell short. It wasn't as goofy as I thought it was going to be. And at times it got a little bit too serious and shit. But it's basically about these stoners, obviously, that are anticipating a, uh, you know, a zombie ac apocalypse. And when it happens, they get bored. And that's kind of what the viewer feels once that happens because they just stop like participating in it and eating. All they do is eat in their house and shit. It was just, it got really kind of lame and stuff. Um, and then really not a lot of zombie action, but you want to see the full review. I don't recommend it, but you know, it is what it is. Bong the living dead. Uh, actually another one I did. Holy crap. This was not planned. I did not 
realize these were all in a row, but Alien Ween, I actually reviewed this on the 31 Days of Horror also, and uh, this was a fucking blast, man. I had a real good time with this one, man. Insane uh, effects and visuals in this one, man. It's just nonstop from like the beginning of the movie to end. It has to deal with aliens on Halloween and shit like that and invading these bodies. Kind of got a little bit of a body snatcher thing going on. It's really fun, man. Really, really fun. It's an Italian film, so it is subtitled. You're going to have to read it and stuff, but uh, I do recommend it, man. Uh, somebody told me it's actually on Tubi, so if you want to check it out that way, you know, instead of purchasing it, but this was really cheap. It was only like five or six bucks for the DVD. I think it was five bucks, four bucks or something prime too so but yeah alien win fun one check it out and this is cool man my homeboy godzilla sent me god of god of <laughs> son of godzilla jesus christ my homeboy godzilla sent me son of godzilla um because he picked up that uh, that big ass monstrosity set from criterion so he didn't need this anymore but this was actually the only godzilla film i was missing from my collection so very happy to have this i remember really thinking this movie was cheesy as all fuck. I, it's been years and years since I've seen it, so I actually can't wait to dig back into this one, but just looking at... Man, the son of Godzilla looks so bad on the back. Like, look at him, man. He looks like the dude from Dinosaurs. From the TV show, TV show Dinosaurs, but that show was actually pretty fun. But uh, son of Godzilla. Uh, yeah. Here's one for you, man. Erotic Knights of the Blind Dead. It's kind of like incorporating a couple different titles there erotic nights and oh man I, it's part of this wild ironic streamline number 21 i've been kind of knocking these things off some like some of them are really bad but a lot of them are actually pretty entertaining it's better than some of the stuff is better than the usual wild eye stuff that they put out which we all know wild eye can be very hit and miss very hit and miss like i'm talking some of the worst films you ever seen to some actually pretty good ones so i know every time you recommend something from wild eye people are like oh, that's wild eye i'm like yeah i know but um, I don't know anything about this. So, Erotic Nights of the Blind Dead. It's the latest release. Uh, one from SRS Studio, man. Vicious Sweet. Again, don't know anything about this one. I was actually going to review this one during the 31 days. I just didn't get around to it because, you know, there's 31 days. <laughs> you know, just run out of time. But uh, um, it looks like kind of some potential shot on video shit. Newer, probably digital shit. I don't know. But low budget crap. All right, so the reincarnation of Isabel. Now, this hasn't happened to me in a very long time, but this actually just happened to me. Uh, I picked this DVD DVD up because we were doing, um, you know, the director on, you know, um, on the Italian Horror Month for the podcast, which is uh, Renzo uh, uh, Priscelli, and. I didn't realize that this movie actually goes under a couple different titles, which I should, it should be expected when it comes to Italian films that they usually do that, but it goes under Black Magic Rights and actually had the Blu-ray. Fuck. So I paid like five or six bucks for nothing, but it's kind of cool because, you know, I get the, the movie under this title. It's an old Redemption Snapper case and you don't really see these around anymore. Uh, so Renato Pacelli, um, we actually just recorded the uh, podcast a couple nights ago on Friday night. So that'll be out in a couple days after this drops. So uh, be on the lookout for that really fun episode with um, Mr. Parker, a.k.a. Dave Parker, Mr. Parker on there. So again, making his uh, second um, appearance during Italian months. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, so the reincarnation of Isabel. Fuck, man. It is what it is. Uh, alone with her. Um, I told the story. I think I reviewed this on the 31 Days of Horror, but I told the story about um, how I checked out that 50, 50 best horror movies you'd never seen documentary on. I think it was on Tubi. And I was going into it just thinking, hey, I'm going to kill a couple hours watching some people talk about films I own and seen every one of them kind of thing. Lo and behold, there was one movie on there I had never seen before. I'd heard of this movie, didn't know much about it, but. It piqued my interest when it was on there, so because a lot of the other movies are pretty good. Nothing too obscure and shit like that, but this one right here is starring Colin Hanks, and he plays kind of a creep who's essentially stalking this girl right here. He's set up hidden cameras in her in apartment, learns everything about her, befriends her, and uh, goes from there and stuff. So it's actually pretty interesting, really, really well done. I thought the editing with, when you do movies like that, the editing has to be properly, properly done and also... Um, you know, the acting really kind of sells this one, too. They, everyone does a great job in this, too. So you don't really get to see a lot of Tom Hanks because it's mostly POV. It's mostly, you know, him watching footage and kind of stuff like that. But 
pretty good film. Along with her, I recommend it. Oh yes, some Todd Sheet stuff. Clown NATO had to pick it up. We actually reviewed this on the podcast. Uh, the other guys hated it. I thought it was fun as fuck because it actually is. Uh, it definitely is a little bit long winded. Not his best work he's done in the last few years, but I enjoyed it, man. It's you know, <laughs> I think JP's argument was I I wanted more clowns in the in the in the tornado, and I'm like. What the fuck? That'd just be ridiculous, man. It's more about them traveling around through this tornado. It's the clown NATO kind of thing, but it's ridiculous, man. It's really gory and stuff. It's typical Todd Sheet stuff, really. But uh, it is a little bit long winded, but I had fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Might have some more of that coming up. I really do feel like trash right now. Uh, VHS Nasty, uh, the video nasties. This is the third one in this installment. I have the other two, and I have yet to watch them. <laughs> So, I'll be getting around to watching these pretty quick, actually. Um, they are put out by... Who the fuck put these out, man? Film Ladia? Some shit like that? I don't know. They, they look fucking... They're, they're cheap as hell, man. They're really, really cheap. Um, I have heard that I think the first one was really good, so... Yeah. I'm always interested. I'm always down for horror docs, so... VHS nasty, so deal with the video nasties. Another one I did during 31 Days of Horror, Bone Hill Road, and going back to some Todd Sheets. Now, this movie was really good. I mean, there's one essential part, or one part in the film I didn't really care for too much, more or less with the serial killer and stuff, but I thought the the werewolf, the practical werewolf was really well done. And overall, it was really cool, man. Shout out to my man, Steve Ferrandino, who actually worked on this movie also. Um, yeah, so, Bone Hill Road, fun stuff, if you like your Todd Sheets stuff. I found this one at my buddy's uh, shop. Uh, it's a film I haven't seen in years and years. I believe this was a TV film, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't watched it since I grabbed the DVD, but uh, it's got William Shatner in it. And the horror at 37,000 feet, man. Um, definitely a scary concept, you know. Man, I love that cover art. You can see that face in the background and that plane coming out of the mouth. That's good shit, man. That's a that's good artwork. Good stuff. Uh, with <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> Fucking look at him, man. I don't know, he just looks goofy in that picture for some reason, but yeah, cool film. Picked up this because the homeboy Mikey Fisher actually Patreon this movie for me to watch, and I couldn't even find it online, so I just picked it up. It was like two bucks, big deal. Uh, hunting season, don't know anything about it. I'm sure it's going to be some super low budget trash because it's Mikey Fish that you know recommended the film for me. Uh, directed by Jeff Leroy, I do know the name. I can't think of who he is right now or what else he's done but I, I just noticed that this is actually produced by David Sterling so this is probably like a $12 movie and guaranteed there's some mullets in here too <laughs> oh man uh, I should actually uh, I, I'm, actually I'm not going to bring that up man we had some David Sterling conversation on the podcast on Friday I'm not sure it's going to make the final edit though but um, yeah Jeff yeah got to be some low budget shit uh, then we picked up uh, season seven of American Horror Story. I'm still catching up on these. Buying them. I haven't even started watching. I haven't even seen season one yet, man. It's crazy. So um, one of these times, probably when the show ends, I'll end up going back to it and watching them all. You know, that's just weird. Even though I don't have to do that because they're a story. Every season is a different story. So, but yeah, cult. And that's it for the horror DVDs. Just moving on to some non-horror stuff I'll rip through here. Uh, I picked up Beyond Therapy. This is directed by Robert Altman, who is a fantastic director. Didn't really know much about this one, but I did grab it. The reason why I grabbed it is because it is a... Oh, there it is. Original Anchor Bay. Fuck this lighting, man. It's just so bright. It makes everything white just blaze up. Uh, Beyond Therapy has got Jeff Goldblum in it. and Apparently, this is actually a pretty rare um, Original Anchor Bay release. It's hard to find, so... Eh, whatever. In the collection now. Picked up this Death to Smoochie. I've seen this movie before years and years ago. I, I really don't remember it that much. Um, I wanted to revisit it because my homeboy Derek did it on um, on his podcast. And uh, I'm a big fan of Danny DeVito, man. I absolutely love Danny DeVito shit. And he, you know, he directed this. So, you know, it's got to be some dark-ass comedy. From what I remember, it kind of was. Uh, Edward Norton's also in it, too. Um, so, but long film, man. 110 minutes. It's crazy. That one surprises on the Blu-ray. Uh, picked up Beef 3 for, you know, the hip-hop collection docs and stuff like that. I like these Beef movies, man. They're actually kind of fun. Um, from the QD3 collection, 
it's like it feels like a brick too we got b4 here from the qd3 collection uh we grabbed 16 the art of 16 bars now this one right here i didn't even know existed it was weird i was actually searching for something else and came across this and i was like oh it's done by qd3 collection then i noticed it was narrated by method man i'm like well this has got to be pretty cool it's obviously about you know rhyming and writing 16 bars and shit like that interviews with different mcs and shit so kind of cool man it's right up my alley i own a lot of these type of things so really can never go wrong so Got Kanye right in the middle of the of the front here. That's just ridiculous. I mean, it's you know this cover is so funny. Like you got Kanye in the middle, and then you got freaking Nas back here, most deaf if you can see his face. It's just bizarre. And then Common and, and Jay Z, of course. But it's pretty weird. I don't know why Kanye West is in the middle. Um. We got B-Boy Universe, man. I'm a I'm a big fan of all elements of hip hop, man. Like DJ Battles, uh, MC Battles, of course. We got uh, B-Boy Battles and shit like that. I I live for DJ stuff, man. Um, you know, I'd be, it's too bad they couldn't just like come up with some type of graph competition. Hey, you paint this car, man, and you know, and judge shit like that. But that'd be kind of cool. But this this is like another brick, man. Really cool stuff. Runs like three hours, so that's cool. And I picked up all these for like five, six dollars a piece. I just noticed that Amazon had them like dirt cheap, and I had the first seven volumes. And I just, I always wanted to catch up, and then I saw this crazy sale, so I was like, I picked up the ones that were all cheap. So I grabbed Family Guy Volume Eight, right there. Uh, volume Nine, uh, Volume Ten. I know you can get these in packs of like six, season six to ten and stuff like that, but it was actually cheaper to do it this way. Plus, I have all the other ones individual, too. Uh, volume 11. Man, the white is so bad. And then Season 11. It gets really confusing here because they've released the first 11 releases as volumes. And then it goes to Season 11, which is ridiculous, which is, yeah. And then Season 13. Season 12, for some reason, was like 25 bucks. It makes no sense to me. Absolutely no sense. So I just kind of stopped there because Season 14, 15, and 16 were like... 10 to like $12 or something. And I was like, well, wow, five, six dollars a piece. Really? But can't go wrong with it, man. It's fucking family guys. So, um, but yeah, so that's going to do it for the DVDs here. Uh, let's get into these, uh, Blu rays. Gia. <laughs> All right, so getting into these Blu-rays, baby, baby. Uh, I'm going to start off with the Lone Soldier of Non-Horror that I picked up. I have yet to watch this, but I've been actually dying to watch it because I love the director's other two films in Bone Tomahawk and Brawl in Cell Block 99. I thought those movies were fucking phenomenal. And, of course, it is dragged across concrete. Of course, it's a white cover, and it's just not going to show up right now. Uh... This one had me a little bit worried, man, because, you know, I, I like Mel Gibson. Um, Jennifer Carpenter's cool, uh, and I, I fucks with some Don Johnson, but I was like, Vince Vaughn? I, th I hate Vince Vaughn, man. Um, I do like him better in serious roles, but I don't think that guy's funny at all, and he really annoys the shit out of me, I'm not going to lie. So, uh, But he's probably fine. He finally, he probably is fine. Um, I had worries going into Brawl in Cell Block 99, and he fucking killed that too, but I was like, ah, oh, he's back here. But it is what it is, man. It's, you know, he won me over with, with uh, Brawl and Cell Block 99 for sure. But um, hopefully he keeps up that, you know, kind of serious tone and shit like that. But yeah, I don't know, man. That's it, pretty much like the only shit that I've ever liked Vince Vaughn. And I don't know what it is about that guy. He just rubs me the wrong way. But Brawl and Cell Block 99, that, man, that shit was badass, dude. Fucking badass. All right, getting into the Blu-rays here. Horror Blu-rays. Uh... Start off with a couple just kind of general releases, and then we'll get into the companies. I always that's how I organize my shit because that's how I put it away. So, first up here to Helen Back, the Kane Hodder documentary. Um, I actually want to pick up this book and read the book because I heard the the uh, the documentary just kind of scratches the surface of the story of Kane Hodder. But I thought it, you know, I thought it did a pretty good job for what it was. I mean, it's Kane, and you know, we knew a lot you know, as fans about Kane's life and, you know, his burns and, you know, and, you know certain things about him and shit. So, uh, but it was cool to hear him talk about it and actually show it and, you know, real get emotional, really get emotional about it and things like that. I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. But uh, I got to meet Kane for the first time this past summer and he was a really, he was a lovely guy. I really enjoyed meeting him. 
um, you know, he seemed more interested in me and that that's always a good thing, you know, when he's just, he's interested about his, you know, his fans and stuff and, uh, which is really cool. But uh, I thought this was really well done, you know, it was well done for what it is. So going to have to get the book and do me some reading. So, uh, next up here, we grab nightmare cinema. Uh, this was like a Mick Garris project, I believe who had, you know, um, put this anthology together. Mick Garris is known for doing that shit, of course, with Masters of Horror and stuff like that. But, uh, of course, Mick Garris did a, one of the things on here, one of the shorts, Joe Dante, um, David Slater did 30 Days a Night. Um, the dude that did my Midnight Me Tram, I'm not even going to attempt his name because I've never been able to say it properly. And, of course, the dude that did One of the Dead, which is a really funny Cuban Zomcom type shit. Uh, overall, this was actually pretty solid. I, I The... F- the first story actually kind of annoyed the shit out of me. It, that millennial fucking dialogue and just like, OMG and oh, fuck, sh- shut the... F- man, when people talk like that, I just want to fucking... Oh, man, I hate that shit, man. Like, just say, oh my God, or what the F? Who the fuck talks like that? Just say, what the fuck, man? Drives me nuts. Um, Anyways, I digress. But anyways, that was part of the short and just it drove me nuts. But a couple of the shorts in here were actually pretty good, man. Um... So I won't give anything away, but it's solid. It's definitely worth the watch. It's a decent anthology film from this year. So Nightmare Cinema, pretty cool. Uh, Study in Terror, uh, released by Mill Creek. Um, I believe this, you know, actually, I don't think this is a Hammer film. It's like in the Hammer realm. Um, Of course, it's a Jack the Ripper story. So looking forward to checking this out. Ah, yeah. Banana Splits the movie. (laughs) <laughs> I won't lie, man. I, I knew about Banana Splits, but it's like before my time. I think it was like from the early 70s, I think. Late 60s or whatever. i uh, never seen any of the episodes and shit like that. Um, but this was just... <laughs> this shit had me roaring, man. I think it's it's just such a brilliant idea having, you know, this kid's set. This kid's TV set of characters fucking start killing people it's just amazing to me um i had a blast with this really really fun stuff i don't understand why people are hating on that finally got around to picking up shin godzilla uh because this shit had never gone down since the time it came out in canada here uh it it was 25 on amazon forever and i got it for 8.99 so yeah loved it absolutely love shin godzilla great film really really great visuals in that one finally got around to picking up us because again these catalog titles when they come out here they they just never seem to go down in price and that's why i end up picking up these things like months after the release because then they go down to like 10 bucks and then i grab them so i don't really need to grab them right away for you know 25 dollars by every fucking edition out there every variant cover and shit but yeah i really i really enjoyed um this latest Jordan Peele film. I know a lot of people are actually confused about it. Elevated horror <laughs> seems to be the most hated term in, in horror right now is elevated horror. Um, I really honestly hate that term. I think it's even pretentious to say that, but uh, it's, it's really good, man. And we did a really good review on um, fresh cuts with the fresh cuts guy for this movie. So if you're a little bit confused about the film, check out that review. It's phenomenal. The guy Venom that I did it with, um, he'd seen the movie like four times before I did it. So he recognized a lot of shit in there. So good stuff. Uh, Vampire Hunter D. This was actually the very first show from our hiatus back. Uh, we did a anime horror show. This is one of the films that we did. Um, Knew about the film, obviously. I'd never seen it before, but this was a really fun watch, man. I absolutely love this. Got to get me the sequel, so probably see that in the next update, actually. I haven't got it yet. But now when I think about it, I should grab the sequel because everyone's been telling me, if you like this one, you'll definitely enjoy the second one, too. So, uh, But Vampire Hunter D, um, good stuff, man. Really, really good, gory, fun, horror anime. Yeah, good shit, man. I enjoyed it. One of my favorites of the year so far, Bliss. I absolutely love the shit out of this movie from my man... Joe Bigos? I don't know how the hell they say that name. Is it Bigos? Bigo? I don't know. Bigos? Because technically, wouldn't it be E? Bigos? Um, he did The Mind's Eye and uh, Almost Human. So this is a third feature, full-length feature he's done. And this is a trippy film, man. It's a really, really trippy film. It's It kind of leaves itself open for interpretation a little bit. To, you know, actually what's going on and stuff. But it's it's fantastically shot, acted. It's just it's crazy, man. It's got crazy, crazy colors and stuff. Um, Bliss. Good shit, man. Check it out. That one's still sealed. I watched it online before I picked it up. Uh, the next couple movies here are actually birthday gifts. I had a birthday in October, the beginning of October. Uh, 
And so my man Derek D. Boogie got me Mothra, the Steel Book of Mothra. I didn't realize that this was like this too, man. It's awesome. That's a great slipcover. Really cool. But yeah, got me the the Mothra Steel Book, which you know I expected because I, he, you know, they asked for a list of movies, and when as soon as I put that out, I'm like, Derek's gonna get me Mothra because that's just something that he would buy because him and his Godzilla and, and uh, Godzilla World and Kaiju films. But yeah, Mothra. And he also picked me up Knife Plus Heart. Um, This is like a modern French giallo. uh, Having to do with like gay porn. And it's set in the 70s too. It's set in like the later 70s I believe. And it's like this producer of gay porn. And these people start getting picked off and things like that. And it's um, like no disrespect. But this movie is like really, really gay. Like there's a lot of gay action in it. Um, A lot of man on man stuff. Because I mean it's, it's dealing with gay porn and stuff. This shit does not make me uncomfortable. I know I talk to people about this film when it came out and uh, I won't mention any names but they they said they had a hard time watching this and actually turned it off two or three times and I'm like I don't get it like it's just it's just a fucking movie man but (laughs) just be warned I mean if it makes you uncomfortable and shit like that there is a lot of that type of action in this but I thought it was really good I thought it was actually a pretty good film it's slow it's it's very giallo-ish you know it's uh it definitely has um dialogue in it you know and shit like that so but it's cool man I thought it was really interesting um, and look at that, it's even fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, which I'm very surprised about, considering the content of it, but Night Plus Heart, good shit, I enjoyed it. Uh, this one here came from my man Sam, he picked me up Django the Bastard. Uh, I always was under the impression that this movie right here was like a straight up spaghetti western, directed by Sergio Garoni, um, who fucking did some horrible like Nazi exploitation films too. It's, it's crazy to me that that guy did this movie, because this shit is phenomenal. And actually, this has horror elements. It has a very gothic horror kind of supernatural element to it. It's really trippy, man, for a Django film. Uh, put out by Snaps Films, so the transfer is phenomenal. It's really, really well done. Uh, this has become one of my favorites, man. I, I absolutely fucking loved this movie. I thought it was just phenomenal. I don't want to say too much about it, but you like Django films, you're going to get the whole Django thing with a supernatural kind of gothic-y twist to it. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out, man. It's good shit. Um fucking loved it man really really good shit thanks thank you sam for that shit (coughs) excuse me and you also picked me up from hell it came now i actually thought that this was the other film that derek was going to grab me so kind of interesting uh from hell it came um from warner archive i believe it came out sometime in 1957 i was going to say 1957 or 58 59 that's what i was thinking but uh creature feature yeah from hell it came awesome can't wait to dig into that one and my man, Matt, from You and Your Horror Movies, good buddy of mine, picked up uh, Death Warmed Up for me from Severin. Uh, Severin releases have become so hard to get because they took them off Amazon and you can only get them from like their website and Diabolic and, and fucking Grindhouse and stuff. And the problem is, again, me in Canada, it's the shipping and conversion. It, like One of these things cost me like 50 bucks. So I'm like, fuck that shit, I'm not doing that. So they become really, really a pain in the ass to get and I'm very very thankful that he picked this up for me because it's one that would have just cost me through the roof but it is an upgrade for me I do have the VHS of this but I actually really enjoy this film it's from 1984 it's an Aussie exploitation film so I can't wait to dig into this and check it out again you know like with a good transfer because I've only ever seen this movie with shitty transfers so Death Warmed Up love the cover I think it has reversible cover or maybe that was a slip I don't know I don't know uh Oh, look at that. I'm losing shit off a pile and it wasn't even big. <laughs> Another one I did on the 31 Days of Horror. Scary movie. Uh, from 1991. Uh, it, it's fun. It definitely has its moments. I think it does have some opportunities that were missed in this one. But, you know, it's still pretty cool for what it is. And I got to say, man, the transfer by by Afgaf. That's not how you... That not. That's not even how you would say that. EGFA, um, they did a really good job with this, man. I'm really liking this label. I'm trying to get all the the titles. They actually numbered these, which is annoying to me because that's why I have to get them all. But I really like what they're putting out. It's really obscure kind of randomness and shit like that. So I've been kind of picking them off here and there and stuff. But I I really enjoyed Scary Movie, man. Uh, Fun shit, man. Definitely give it a shot. Um, And check out my review. Full review. So I won't talk about that anymore. I also reviewed this one, uh, Slimed. This was actually a movie that was recommended to me by my man, uh, Mikey Fisher. 
uh, months and months ago, and he would Patreoned it, but I couldn't find it online. And I, and I was like, well, shit, dude, like I'm not going to be able to get it in time to do that. So he just changed his pick. Uh, fast forward six months later, I saw it on Amazon for like really cheap. And I was like, fuck, man, that was the movie he was talking about. So I picked it up. It's fun. It's goofy-ass trauma shit, man. It's got heavy, heavy social commentary. And it's actually really fun how they did the movie um, to, you know, to say what they were trying to say and shit. Uh, you know, if you're just going to take it for face value, it's pretty fucking goofy. But, I mean, anybody that's into any type of shit that's going on in the world today will recognize the social commentary in this. pretty fun. Uh, but full review up on my channel. It's fun. Slimed from Troma. Uh, yeah, I picked a bucket of blood from all of, um, of course, Roger Corman directed film. I even have another Blu-ray of this, but I, for some reason, I love this cover art. It's just, I love the artwork on this. It's great. And I love Bucket of Blood too, man. It's like, it's one of my favorite Corman films. I don't know why I love this movie. I reviewed this film a couple times on my channel, actually. Um, but yeah, Bucket of Blood from good old Roger Corman. Now, this is weird because I didn't need to pick these up. This is exactly why <laughs> this is a part of the condition I have. When I come across things for really cheap that I don't need and I just pick them up anyways because I'm like, they're different editions. This is fucking problems, man. So I end up picking up, which kind of pisses me off, but Phantasm 3 and Phantasm 4. This one pisses me off because it doesn't have the slipcover and I'm not even a big slipcover person, but all the other ones have them. Now, the reason why I picked up 3 and 4 as you probably know, I do have the Arrow box set, the Blu-ray set and stuff. And I have, like, so many editions of these movies. But they were $5 a piece on Blu-ray. Brand new sealed, $5. I'm like, shit, dude. And plus, you know, it's kind of cool. They're different They're different artworks and shit. And Phantasm is one of my favorite franchises. If It's in my top three favorites. And uh, so I was like, shit, man, why not, right? Because I already had the first one from Wellgo and also the fifth one. So filled in the gaps with these ones. I don't think they released part two solo because Screen Factory has the rights and stuff. I don't know. Um, but of course, I do have the Arrow box set, so I didn't ne technically need these. But they're for cover arts. And then to make things worse, and I'm not even... A th this is even more fucked up. I'm not even a steelbook collector. And then I found this Phantasm steelbook from Wellgo for 10 and I fuck, I'm like, I gotta buy that, man. That's ridiculous. So, I think I might just use that this as a display piece because I absolutely love... Phantasm's, like, one of my favorite movies of all time. I absolutely love... I could talk about Phantasm, I swear, forever. It's just so many things I love about it. And so that's it, man. You know, like, Phantasm editions I don't need, but I'm buying. It's just, it's just a serious disease I have. It's crazy. And you know what? I'll probably end up buying... I See, I missed the Wellgo box set. Because I was on the fence about it. I just picked up the Arrow one. And I was like, do I really need it? And I was like, nah, fuck it. You're not going to do that shit. And I was like, I wanted it. As soon as I couldn't get it, I wanted it. So I think I might buy that other one that's coming out. I know. I have a serious ass problem. Serious problem. All right. So that was it for kind of the regular stuff. Um, let's get into the companies. Yes. Somebody asked me this one time why I show my stuff off in companies. And it's because, I already explained this, it's because that's the way I, I, you know, I have my collection is in companies, right? So it's easy for me to put away. I just grab a stack, put it away. Anyways, on to the Kino Classics. Now, Kino had a really, man, Kino has been fucking killing it lately, man. They, they, they're they putting out so much good stuff all the time. They killed it in October. They put out so much good stuff again. It's hard to keep up with them, but the thing I like about Kino, they're available on Amazon and they're cheap. They're really, really cheap, even for us Canadians. So, Parasite 3D. I believe you can actually watch this in 3D, too. It's crazy. I th I'm assuming it's in black and red, or the blue and red glasses kind of thing. I haven't even opened this up yet. Uh, Demi Moore's f first film, uh, directed by Charlie Band, of course. Um, you know, I actually have a original 1982 uh, kind of pop-up 3D thing in, in my basement here that my man Rob gave me. So that's kind of cool. But this is an upgrade from the DVD. But I enjoy Parasite. It's not the greatest film in the world, but it's still pretty fun. You know, it's early, early Charlie Band type stuff. So, yeah, I dig it. I dig it. Uh, I reviewed this one on 31 Days of Horror also. The Man Who, uh, the man who Could Cheat Death, uh, of course, with um, Christopher Lee. Um, directed by Terrence Fisher, another fantastic director. You know, I have to say, though. Like I said in my review, it's not really the greatest mad scientist movie out there. This one probably could have been a lot better. This is actually a remake. 
um, I think of like a drama that came out something like 15 years earlier, some shit like that. So, but it's okay. It does have its moments. It definitely has its moments. I love the idea and stuff. It's definitely worth checking out, especially if you're a Christopher Lee complete. You just got to see everything he does. And, and also Terrence Fisher also, cause you know, great director. So, but another one I, I reviewed, see, like I said, I buy a lot of movies specifically to review on there. Some years I don't, I'll just go to the collection, but, I, but a lot of these things I wanted to pick up anyways. So, uh, the ghost of Sierra de Cobre, um, really, really fun film, man. Really great atmosphere. Martin Landau absolutely knocks it out the park. Like his character, his acting is brilliant. This is really, really good shit. Um, just check it out, man. Really good stuff. And then again, this October Kino with baby blood an upgrade from my anchor Bay DVD. I love this movie. It's a French bloodbath, man. It's crazy. Um, I don't want to give too much away from it, but you got to check it out. It's from 1990, so it's right at the cusp of the, right at the start of the 90s, but definitely sticks out as being one of my favorite 90s films. I love Baby Blood. It's great stuff. Um, just happy to see that this came out on Blu-ray, man. It's fantastic. It's crazy. Never thought that I'd actually see a Blu-ray that because, of, you know, you never know with some of these older Anchor Bay titles that they had the rights to, where the rights are going and shit. So, But they're starting to get dispersed out now, which is cool. Uh, what happened to Aunt Alice? Uh, of course. Um, yeah, you know what? I've actually never seen this movie before. I've never seen this film before. I heard, I've heard from many people that this one actually had quite a bit of production problems, and it kind of came out a little bit sloppy. And it's it, you can kind of see that on the screen and stuff. But I'm curious to check it out. So I have heard decent things about it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to Aunt Alice? Looking forward to checking that. And then we grabbed this one. I didn't really know much about, but it's called Phobia. <clears throat> the thing that sold me, John Huston did the film, but it's had a, a terrifying psychological thriller. I love psychological thrillers for some reason. I'm just a big fan uh, from 1980. And it was a film I hadn't really heard about. So I was like, wow, that's really interesting. So that always piques my interest when I haven't heard of something. And I'm like, damn, I got to get my, I got to get that shit. So Phobia um, looks pretty damn cool, man. Yeah, it looks cool. Uh, Trilogy of Terror 2 from 1996. Another 90s film. Um, you know what, man? I never used to be the biggest fan of this film. And then I rewatched it. You know, so it was really, really fun, man. I mean, I'm still not the hugest fan of the, the story about the little boy coming back because it's like a remake of one of Dan Curtis's earlier uh, shorts. I think he did in uh, Dead of Night. So he remade it for Trilogy of Terror. And I think the original one's actually better than this one too. But the, the little boy in this one just annoys the shit out of me. But the other two stories are fantastic. I love the third one with the rats though. It's fucking great, man. No, or is that the second one? I don't know which one. Um, or is it the... No, the last one's got to be the the Zoomy doll. Anyways, I digress. Or maybe it's... I don't know. No, it's the third one. I don't know. Doesn't fucking matter. But it's in there. The one with the rats and, and the casket and shit is fucking great, man. Um... But yeah, I actually really enjoyed the shit out of this trilogy of terror too. Good stuff. Uh, we picked up Zoltan, Hound of Dracula. And one, another one I've actually never seen. It's, it's, at least I don't think I've seen this one. Albert Band directed this. Uh, I was trying to remember if I've seen this or not. I was like looking into it and I'm like, I don't know, man. I, I'm going to have to peep this, man, to maybe refresh my memory or some shit. But Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, that's awesome, man. I love me some... <laughs> anything to do with killer dogs and shit i love that fucking amazing yeah transformations uh directed by what the fuck's is um jay Kamen. jay Kamen, yeah is that the guy that did no maybe it's not i don't know i all i've heard about this movie is that's really bad <laughs> um so I'm really I'm really curious to check it out. It's a film from '88. I have never checked out, and you know I did a 52 her of horrific weeks '88 years ago, but this wasn't out at the time. I don't even know if it had a DVD at the time. But um, yeah, executive produced by Charles. So you know it's gonna be some fucking low budget shit right there. But I have heard it's actually bad. Uh, the Nightcomers with my man Marlon Brando. Yeah, I heard good things about this, like really good things. It's like a like a thriller horror type thing, uh, set in nineteen or not set in nineteen seventy, came out in nineteen seventy two, but 
If it's got Marlon Brando in it, man, I'm definitely peeping it out. So I actually really like Marlon Brando, man. I don't know why I would say actually. Doesn't everybody kind of like Marlon Brando? He's pretty good. And another one I did, 31 Days of Horror. And soon the darkness. Um, yeah, it was the first time watched for me. It's a fantastic film. Really, really good stuff, man. I know this one was remade in the early 2000s. Never seen the remake, but from what I've heard from people's comments and stuff, this one definitely is superior to the remake. So, uh, but good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, moving along into a couple Blue Underground titles I picked up, which I honestly don't pick up a lot of Blue Underground Blu-rays because I have like the complete DVD collection. But I, I haven't been able to re- resist myself on these like triple disc versions. And 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 essentially, if they're going to put out anything Italian, I'm going to upgrade. I'm just, I'll, I'll upgrade anything Italian to Blu-ray. It doesn't matter. Uh, New York Ripper, man, one of my all-time favorite movies from my favorite director of all time, Lucio Fulci. Wow, you can actually see that uh, lenticular working on here. That's kind of cool. This is a fantastic lenticular cover. It just looks so good in person, man. Really, really good. Oh, uh, the transfer on here. <sighs> I mean, the old transfer the, on the original Blu-ray that they put out looked ridiculously good. It was probably one of the best ones they'd done. So it doesn't surprise me this one looks even crazier. Um, insane triple disc version, like just everyone and their dogs have shown this off, but you know how it is, man. So, but one of my favorites, I've seen this movie way too many times. Yeah. Fucking toe rubs, baby. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Uh, the Stendhal syndrome. Um, not one of my favorite Dario Argento films. Definitely not as good as Inferno. Something I don't know. I'm wearing my shirt here. Uh, Also from 1996, a film that did not make my top 10 in 1996. Believe it or not, you're probably thinking, what the fuck made your list in 96 if this didn't go back and listen to the show? Um, But, you know, it's it's a film that I I found a crazy price on it, man. Like under 20 for this brand new. And I was like, shit, I got to grab that. And I actually completely had forgotten about even upgrading this. um, Because like I said, I'm not really the biggest fan of it, but. I mean, it's not like I dislike this movie. I do like it. I just don't love it. You know, it's just, it's awkward to me at times and things like that, but very awesome edition, three disc. And we also grabbed, I, here we go again with the we. We grabbed like I'm fucking two different people. Uh, Manhattan Baby. You know, one of my, I, I wouldn't even say one of my least favorite Fulci films because there is a couple other ones that are definitely lower than this one. But this movie like has so much potential to be great. And it just ends up being so flat and stuff. But the music is what keeps it alive. And the music is phenomenal in this movie uh, from Fabio Frizzi. And uh, yeah, it's the alternate cover to this Eye of the Evil Dead. But I love how they put Manhattan Baby on the on the spine. So if you forget what the alternate title is and it's in your collection, you know, it's in there like this. And you go and you're like, oh, yeah, Manhattan Baby. And if it said, you know, the, you know Eye of the Evil Dead, you're like, what the fuck movie is that, man? Because, you know, you can't remember everything, right? Um, but another fantastic edition and another one I got under 20. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do that. So sale hunting, I guess it was just actually, it wasn't even on sale. It was just like the price that they had to list it. It was crazy. Um, okay. So speaking of sales now, garage house, I believe, I don't think they've ever even done this before, but uh, the owner of garage house pictures, um, had a sale and it was like two for 20, but you had to order in, 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 uh, couplets, in couples so you had to get like an even number it was weird because there were seven garage house titles that i needed to complete the whole line of films but i could only get six of them i was like fuck man what the hell is that anyways so we picked up foes uh if you're not familiar with garage house pictures the one that did all those uh um you know trailer compilations and stuff like that the trailer trauma compilations that everyone was like freaking out about and shit but those are all the ones that i had so i needed to grab some of this shit but this one was an interesting release because i believe this movie never had a release before at all it was like lost from like the early 70s i think that's the one here some shit like that but yeah um no this one i think may have had i don't know but anyways first time on blu-ray blah 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 i digress foes alien shit about this couple that are um, at this uh, light tower on this island and shit, and they have to deal with these aliens and shit. Honestly, this movie's pretty bad, but it was entertaining. There was something odd about it that just kept kind of pulling me in. It was like the aliens were sucking me in, for Christ's sake. It was weird. It was strange. Um, had really cheesy effects, man. But I had a lot of fun with this, man. It was it was good shit. So that was uh, foes. I'm just gonna catch a drink here. 
You know, my skinny days now, man. I drink water, I don't drink beer. Almost 50 pounds down. It's crazy. Um, yeah, moving along. Sorry. This is the movie, I believe, that hasn't ever been released yet. Uh, 1975 says Proto Slasher on Blu-ray. So this one was actually considered to be lost. It's called The Intruder. Um, you know, actually, I was expecting this movie to be, like, atrocious because it had never been released. It's actually not that bad. The production value to it's better than I was ever thinking it was going to be. Um, but you know, it definitely acts like a proto slasher, man. It's got some decent moments in it and stuff. Nothing crazy, but uh, it was it was a decent watch though. I didn't hate it at all. <coughs> oh. Um, Web of the Spider. Now this is the one that I really wanted to check out when they released this one a few years back, a couple years back. It's like number eight. I really wanted it, but I couldn't find it anywhere but like Diabolic and shit. And they ch- charge like seventeen dollars or for one Blu-ray shipping. Like it's insanity to Canada. It's such a shame because I used to order from them twice a month back in the day when they had like cheap shipping and our dollar was better. Um, but yeah, Web of the Spider. This one looked really cool. Um, Edgar Allan Poe. So based on the other Edgar Allan Poe. Um, yeah, I, I, this one looks cool, man. Let me know if you've seen it. <laughs> this one just, I had no interest in it because I thought it was, I don't know what the fuck, man. It's the cover art, man. But this one's literally called Super Cock. I think it has shit to do with, like, cockfighting and stuff, man. It's weird. Like, 1975, Fred Fred Olin Ray directed this movie. Like, this is one of uh, Fred Olin Ray's movies I've never seen before, and it's, like, just cracking me up, man. Super cock. (laughs) It's amazing. Uh, We got a couple Andy Milligan films here. These are the two that I'd never seen. I I don't, like, so... Like every Andy Milligan film, this is crazy. I can't believe that Andy Milligan gets so much love with his movies, but this is one of his later ones. <clears throat> Most of the films that he released were like, you know, early, late 60s, early 70s, and shit like that. But this one's called Weirdo. I think it's just weird. No, Andy, Mill- Andy Milligan's The Weirdo. It says 1989. Now, I. Oh, maybe this one actually was directed in the 80s. Okay. So, yeah, 1989, The Weirdo. I'm really curious to check this out, like production value, because this early stuff is just so trashy and shitty, and it's just like. How does this guy get so much love? But I can see it, though, because it's so cultish. But So that's the weirdo. And then there's this one I don't know anything about. This one came out in 1988, and it's called uh, Monstrosity. Now, when they, I remember when they announced this, I was like, shit, I didn't even know about this one. But, um, yeah, Monstrosity. I think this one actually had a slipcover at one time, but eh, I don't care. I'll probably end up taking off the slipcover anyways uh, because none of the other ones have them. So, oh, yeah, that's the cover that I think that it was, yeah, that I was shown on the site um so yeah monstrosity another later annie milligan film Pff, fucking crazy dude that's interesting all right so let's speed this up here let's uh let's get into some actually i was gonna say scorpion stuff this is actually code red shit <clears throat> had to do it man had to upgrade conquest fucking falchi's amazing sword and sorcery sword and sandals whatever you want to call it um epic amazing it's got awesome music it's got great atmosphere real foggy dusty atmosphere great gore it's got horror gore in it it's just phenomenal i'm glad that they actually included this cover art that uh um blue underground used love this movie man i rewatched it the other night and just like rekindled my love for it i absolutely think this shit is just fun as hell it's just it's falchy man it, it's totally falchy you know the way it's directed the way the story goes you know the the insane gore, the ridiculousness that has like zombie, like this, this commission artwork at first, I wasn't like overly fond of it. And I was like, wait a minute, it's actually really awesome. It's got like the zombies on it. And like the, you know, the fucking decapitated head here. Oh, fucking it's amazing. It's good shit. Fun ass, fun ass movie. Another upgrade for me, uh, slave of the cannibal God with the beautiful Ursula Anders, Stacy Keach, um, directed by the amazing Sergio Martino. Absolutely love Martino. I've reviewed this film a couple different times, but finally happy to have an upgrade for it because it's an Italian film that I love. I love. I, every time I think of this movie, I always think of the, the part when the fucking dude like just starts biting into those like real snakes, like chewing them right in half and stuff. This is fucking crazy, man. But yeah, Slave of the Cannibal. I actually really like this. Um, this commission artwork is actually pretty cool too. It's pretty neat. 
And yes, Ruggiero Diodato's Jungle Holocaust. And again, that artwork right there is actually, it's okay. The face looks a little bit weird, but it's not bad. But another um, upgrade that, uh, that was definitely a long time in the coming. Long time in the coming? <laughs> the Last Survivor. Yeah, good shit, man. I haven't actually checked out the transfers on these two yet, but I have watched Conquest, like I said, and it was it's great. It's really, really great. All right, so moving across the pond to um, the UK with some 88 films releases. Um, number 48, we got a veal for Lisa, which, a, a veal for Lisa, a black veal for Lisa. We actually reviewed this on the podcast last year. And I actually do have another Blu-ray release of this. My man Derek actually picked this up for me years ago. But then, of course, 88 Films goes and releases it. And I got to pick it up because I collect this line. But that's okay. From Massimo Dallamano. Uh, that was the director that we did on that Italian month last year. Uh, pretty interesting film. I liked it more than the other guys. But that seems to be the case with almost every film that we do on Italian Horror Month. But uh, straight up Giallo. This one is a little bit slower and stuff. But it does have its pretty good parts and stuff. But yeah, that's number 48. Maybe it'll show up better if I block my face. I don't know. Yeah, number 48. And then we got number 49, which is Green Inferno, a.k.a. Cannibal Holocaust 2. I rewatched this the other day. Man, this is one of those movies that's like, that's like so bad. It's like so bad that it's actually pretty good. I don't know. There's something entertaining about this movie. It's just crazy. Just to- The whole thing just keeps me entertained, man. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, but I mean, to call like Cannibal Holocaust too, I mean, I, I understand the narrative kind of, but really it's nothing like Cannibal Holocaust, and <laughs> but yeah, so that's number 49, uh, number 50 and 51 will be the, the croc, um, you know, the killer crocodile one and two, which I do have in the mail. So jumping a, ahead to number 52 with Pagnini horror, another film I did during the 31 days of horror. Uh, I love this movie, man. Uh, Lucio, uh, Luke. Lu, Luigi Cozy, holy fuck, I can't talk, I'm tired. Uh, Luigi Cozy, man, it's like nonsensical shit, man. But if you want to see Donald Pleasance hamming the shit up in this and possibly really drunk, it's like he's playing his character from Wake and Fright in this. And it's actually a dub Donald Pleasance too because this was one of the movies I couldn't get him back. And he was notorious for going back and doing his own dubs, but he just couldn't do this one for some reason. <laughs> he just got released in the dubs. So it's like drunk hamming it up Donald Pleasance like without his voice. It's so funny. It's a messy movie, but it's really fun. I know Severn just put this out, so if you're into the American stuff, then get the Severn release. This one's cheaper. Um, Karate Warrior. Man, dude. Like, I didn't even know how many sequels this thing had spawned until I read the back, and I start, I, I broke it. I was pissing myself, man. It says, Restoration of a Cult Classic beat him up that spawned five sequels. <laughs> five sequels for Karate Warrior. Amazing. So I, I'm really looking forward to checking this out. I might even pop this in right after I fucking I, I do this update, man. I'm just whatever. It's just funny to me. Uh, then we got Eleven Days and Eleven Nights. This one right here, man. I think this is a uh, who directed this? Joe Diamato. Yeah, Joe Diamato directed this movie. Um, it's obviously like sleazy Diamato. Diamato's mostly known for directing like the Emmanuel films and stuff. Um, you know, Beyond Dark. He did some good horror films, but he's he did a lot of sleaze, a lot of fucking sleaze, and this is definitely one of them, judging by the cover, number 54. So, Joe Diamato, and then we got number 55, the latest one, uh, which Beatrice uh, Sensi. This is kind of an interesting Lucio Fulci film. This was the only Fulci film that I didn't own that obviously has a release. Um, and it's like dubbed as like a historical epic or some shit like that. And apparently, even Lucio Fulci has gone on record saying that this is he's the most proud of this movie. So I'm really curious to check this out. I've never seen this before. Um, I'm just really fascinated with this. I know it's based on like true story, like people and shit like that. So I guess that would be historical drama. <laughs> they already say that, but yeah. So I'm looking forward to checking that. That looks really damn interesting. Really, really interested in seeing what he did. And that one's from 69, 1969. So, yeah. So probably about, you know, the time when he, st- he got decent budgets in films before he had to start making real low budget shit. <coughs> okay. Grand finale here. How long has this gone on for? Holy shit, man. It's pretty fucking long. Um, all right. So we got the arrows left. 
and the screen factories. Last month, I didn't pick up any arrows. This month, I got 12. It's just crazy. Uh, all right, so moving along. Killer Nun. Had to upgrade. You know, that's what I love about Italian Month. It, it kicks me in the ass and reminds me to upgrade some of these films that are either just coming out or have been out for a little bit and stuff and got great prices on these, man. Really, really great prices. But Killer Nun, not one of my favorite non-exploitation films, but a definite upgrade from, you know, the, the Blue Underground DVD I have. But uh, it's okay for what it is. You know, I... Yeah, it, it is, man. It's Arrow and it's Italian, so I'm going to upgrade because it's my shit. It's my shit. Yeah, Killer Nun. Strip Nude for your killer. Oh, man, I love this movie by Andre Bianchi. It's just, it's so full of the best muffin tits ever. Man, dude, like, it's amazing. Fun Giallo. Fun, fun Giallo. You just got to do it, man. You got to upgrade, right? You got to do it. Um, Who Saw Her Die, which I reviewed last week with uh, the guys from... Um, no more room in hell on the podcast. It was just me on the podcast with those guys. Um, JP made a slight appearance, sort of JP, but it, the whole show is basically just me and them. I thought it was a really, really fantastic show. So check that out, man. Aldo Lotto, director spotlights. Um, and, uh, yeah, who saw her die. It's it, interesting. It's definitely not as good as short night of glass dolls and stuff, but it's, you know, it's got its moments and stuff, but yeah, still worth the watch. Sticking with the Italian stuff, man. Lee Van Cleef, my man. One of my favorites of all time. Lee Van Cleef. I love this guy. He was... Man, they just don't have guys like that around anymore, man. Fucking those eyes, dude. Like, he's got the craziest eyes in the world, man. He was such a such a gnarly dude. The Grand Duel. A fantastic, fantastic wet, uh, spaghetti western. I absolutely love this. I'm a huge, huge fan. As Everybody knows the spaghetti westerns and westerns in general. Um, my second favorite... Sub or genre of film besides horror is westerns in general, hands down. And uh, it's great, man. I absolutely love this shit, Van Cleef, man. You know, playing that fucking sheriff role, and uh, he's badass, man. He's fucking badass. Uh, this is one that's been out for a long time, and I don't know why I didn't upgrade this, but actually, oddly enough, this is one of the films that we watched last year, another Massimo Dalamano film along with Black Feel. This is good shit, man. This is uh, the sequel to Solange. Kind of, more or less, but really damn good. So, um, yeah, I love these films, man. Really, really good giallo. Uh, switching from Italian stuff to Canadian cult classics. It's like a sci-fi action film called Defcon 4. I had never seen this one. I always knew about this film, and I remember seeing the DVDs around for years and years. I was like, ah, I don't know, man, I'll pass. And then Arrow had it on sale, and I was like, fuck, man, it's my chance. I might as well just pick it up. It's actually pretty fun. It's goofy. It's goofy, man. So, I had fun with it, though. Uh, the Baby. One that I never upgraded from Severn. I do have the Severn DVD. And this is one... I, I think Arrow's had this out for a while. But it was on sale. Like, I think even when it came out, I was like, well, I'll pick it up when it comes on sale. And I did. So, The Baby. Strange, strange fucking movie, man. Really, really strange. Um, but super entertaining, <laughs> to say the least. It's just... This is one that you don't even want to know anything about before you go in. Like the first time I watched this film, I didn't know shit about it. Went in, I was like, "Ooh, that's that's just what I watched. That's crazy." So, yeah, uh, Colobus Man from 1999. This is a movie that I'm glad that's getting a little bit more love. I recommended this movie to so many people throughout the years, and I don't really know if people actually end up watching or not. But I know people are watching it now because when Arrow puts out a title and people jump on that wagon and they're like, I gotta get the Blu-ray. So, uh, but a, a pretty interesting slasher film from 1999. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot in that era, man, that's, you know, and I wouldn't even consider this floating heads because there's no floating heads in the artwork and shit, but good shit, man. It's it's a very 90s film, but it's uh, definitely worth your time, man. So, de upgrade for my DVDs, which I'm getting rid of anyways, so. Uh, then we got Torso. Oh, I turn this one around apparently so yeah torso uh one of my favorites man i fucking love this martino film man sergio martino is is right up there in my top three favorite italian directors of all time you know with well yeah so if i had to name him it'd be lucio falci mario bava and martino i love martino he's done so much good stuff everything all his genres that he's touched man really great stuff but torso is like one of my favorites i can love that movie i think we reviewed that a couple years back 
then Arrow had the balls to release The Prey. Not the balls, but they just they released The Prey, which is a title that everybody wanted because it was it had never gotten a DVD or Blu-ray release. So they released The Prey, and they actually have both cuts on here, the theatrical cut and the international cut. I've never seen... Actually, no, it's not true. I have seen the international cut before, um, but I'd never seen the whole thing. I remember some of the footage that it's in it. Uh, I've seen the theatrical cut of this movie a few times. I really, I enjoy it, man. But man, if you're going to watch one of these, man, watch the theatrical cut over the international cut. The international cut makes the movie shitty, in my opinion. It's a longer cut. It adds in all this kind of weird gypsy, it calls gypsy flashback, like the gypsy shit. Honestly, man, just stick with the theatrical and then maybe check out the international after if you if you want to. But don't start with the international. You might not go to the better cut. So. But yeah, The Prey, it's fun. It's a fun slasher film in the woods. Um, Focus, uh, Al Sweet Alice, uh, great upgrade here uh, to a film that I don't necessarily personally love, love, but I probably gra- gain another appreciation for it watching it with a really good transfer. But I don't know, it's one that I do like. I just even from '76, man, there's films that I like a lot more than Al Sweet Alice, and you know I, I'm probably in the, in the minority there. But you know it is what it is. You don't have to agree with me, man. It's, you just don't have to agree with me. Um. Because that's just my opinion. I'm, so I'm not saying it's not a great film. It's probably better some of the films that I like. But it's just, it's what I like. I don't make best of lists. So, But yeah, Alice Sweet Alice, good shit. And last up for the Arrows. The, I mean, when they when they announced the first one, I was like, are they going to do the second one somehow? Are they going to get the rights to it? Yeah, sure as shit they did. The Hills Have Eyes Part 2, a fucking messy Wes Craven film. He really did it for the paycheck. Um... I mean, even Michael Berryman's even stated that this movie's trashy, but it's, it is bad. I will say this movie is really bad, but it's entertainingly bad. I I have no problem watching this movie. I, I have no problem watching it again. It's just fun. It's stupid fun. I don't know. I have no problem with it, man. All right. So that's the arrow stuff. Moving on to the screen factories, which they have just been murdering it last couple of years, man. It's crazy. So first off, I picked up another steel book and again, Weird, we're, oddly enough, I'm not a steelbook collector, but I have two in this update. It's probably the first two steelbooks I picked up all year, but uh, I picked up this because they didn't have a standard release for the, you know, the original Piranha film. And the only steelbooks I have grabbed so far are the ones that they just didn't have any standard releases, but these are actually kind of cool. I didn't really care for the artworks at first, but I'm starting to dig them, man. They're actually kind of nice, but yeah, so Piranha original, it's classic, man. I mean, I absolutely love this film. It's good shit. <laughs> Uh, then we got uh, The Devil Rides Out, man. Some good old hammer shit here. Oh, dude, I love this movie. I can't wait to actually watch it on Blu-ray. It's really, really fun shit. So, um, yeah, man, The Devil Rides Out. So stoked to have that on Blu-ray. That's amazing. Some more hammer stuff here. We got Straight On Till Morning. I want to say I've never seen this one. I'm pretty sure I've never seen this film, so... Yeah, can't wait to check it out. Like I said, they're killing with the hammer shit, man. Oh, this is this is a crazy upgrade, man, from my Anchor Bay DVD Fright with uh, Susan George, uh, 1972. Love this movie. Oh, it's great shit, man. Really, really great stuff. So it says 72 on here. I don't think it is from 72. I think this movie's from 70. I'm pretty sure it's 71. I think this because now when I think about it, if this was 72, it probably would have been in my top 10. I love Fright, but very cool to see this get a re-release because the dvd's been long out of print went for stupid money so now the people can go and buy it uh picked up robocop 2 and this is actually the very first screen factory collector's edition i don't have a slip cover for i don't really care to be honest because it's robocop 2 but um i didn't really have any um ambition to pick up robocop 2 and 3 until arrow announced um their colossal edition of it i was like you know what i might as well just have all the movies on you know the greatest format so I went out and grabbed these these were really cheap these were only $15 a piece so 15 without slip I'm fine with that it is Robocop 2 I do like Robocop 2 I think it's kind of fun no slip whatever it is what it is um, but yeah so the price was right did it Fear No Evil another one I did on 31 Days of Horror um, yeah this movie's okay it has its moments it gets kind of it gets kind of crazy at the end that's where the, really the good shit happens and stuff but it's not like phenomenal it's from 1981 uh but it does have this really awesome zombie sequence in it that i that i do recommend so finally picked up brain dead this is an older release it's been out i think for a couple years uh just it was an upgrade for my dvd another dvd i'm just pawning off right now <laughs> but i love this movie man bill pullman 
great idea. Good stuff. Check it out if you've never seen it. This was cool, man, to finally get a release. The fan uh, from 1981. Uh about a crazy ass fan I mean all these movies called The Fan is basically about crazy ass fans I know and then there was a German film called Der Fan Der Fan uh, that came out in 82 and then of course there's the one that came out in the 90s I believe with Robert De Niro and shit so this title has been used quite often they're pretty much all the same type of narrative story so this one's really good though I like it uh, yep yeah. picked up In the Mouth of Madness collector's edition uh, one of my favorite John Carpenter films in my opinion probably the most underrated John Carpenter film it's a great story, man. I love this whole, you know, in, you know, the story in the book and reality and verse that. And it's cool, man. It's really good. Sam Neill knocks it out the fucking park as usual because he's such a great actor. But great story. Love it. Oddly enough, I got the, <laughs> I got the slipcover for Robocop 3. And it doesn't surprise me because these have been out for a couple years. And I don't think anyone likes Robocop 3 because this actually, I remembered, I was like, this movie's PG-13, isn't it? Sure as shit, it actually says PG-13 on it. <laughs> and, uh, um, what's his face? Wasn't uh, Robocop in it. Um, Peter Weller. Although the guy, you know, the makeup and shit, actually kind of makes it look like it, but Robocop 3 is shitty, but I enjoy it though. So, had to do it. Had to pick up the blob, you know, for that fucking amazing Kevin Dillon plumage, the, the awesome mullet man oh i gotta do it you gotta do man um it's like a side grade i had the uh the other blu-ray for this too so but it's one of my favorite remakes one of my favorite 80s films actually so that's the blob i actually really dig this cover art too it's cool like the pinks i did it texas chainsaw massacre the next generation and i picked this up solely for the commentary because i want to listen to the commentary on this film really bad to prove my point that this movie was made as satire he's got to say that in there somewhere man he's got to admit that he was making jokes in this film so but it's so fucking weird how they did this man because the theatrical version has is the blu-ray and the director's cut that everyone was after because you know because the dvds there was two there was a canadian version that was the director's cut is on the standard dvd like what the fuck man why didn't they just remaster that one too it's insane like, why? Why would they do that? It's crazy to me, man. I, I, there's got to be a reason. Urban Legend Collector's Edition. Had to do it, man. I actually, this is probably one of my favorite films from that era uh, between, like, Scream. I know what you did last summer, Urban Legend. I take this one over those other two any day of the week because I love Urban Legends, man. I'm a really big fan of just Urban Legends, and I think the movie does them pretty well for what it is, especially for the time, Floating Heads time. Uh, it's got hot chicks in it, man. Some decent uh, decent kills and stuff. But yeah, Urban Legend. I like it. Another Carpenter, Vampires. I always enjoy this, man. I remember seeing this in the, in the cinema when it came out in 98 and noticing um, James Woods when they explode that building. Or is it the house or the building? Or the, the, the hotel, the motel. When he's walking away and they explode it with all the vampires in there and he flinches. I actually noticed that when I was watching the big screen. I'm like, did he just flinch? And sure as shit, he did. <laughs> and they only had one shot at it, but he flinches. I don't even know why I told that story. It's weird. But yeah, vampires, I, I really dig it though. And last up for the Scream Factories is the amazing Omen box set. Yes, and it does have all of them. It's got part four and the remake, which is really damn cool. I'm very excited to have a really good box set and I can get rid of that real flimsy Blu-ray set that came out. I'm going to keep my DVD set though because I actually like that set. It's cool. But of course, we have the original Omen. Awesome artwork. Um, why are these out of order? This is not the original Omen. <laughs> I just realized this is the fucking remake. This is the original Omen. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, the original, man, honestly, man, the remake of the Omen, I am not a fan of. I am not a fan of this movie at all. Like, I hated the casting in it too, man. The casting sucked. So, but yeah, the original Omen, Jesus Christ. The fuck? I should, I'm going to just keep that in. I'm not going to edit that out. Whatever. But love it. Damien, Omen 2. Excellent follow-up. Really enjoy that. I even like the third one with Sam Neill. The Final Conflict, which is actually really good. And the Omen 4, I've only ever seen like once. It's a TV film with a girl. I, I don't honestly really remember it too much, so so yeah that's that and yeah so next month man there's gonna be a lot of box sets man because i've got like a the hammer box set coming you know the one from 88 films there's like 
all these box sets that are coming out next month. It's going to be an update of fucking box sets, I feel, man. It's going to be awesome because, you know, I love me some box sets. But, wow, this has gone on way too long. Holy shit, I'm sorry. And, you know, oh, I wanted to tell this, actually. So, uh, these latest releases from 88 Films actually were, they did, like, a Kickstarter for them. And everybody was getting, like, two of the three slipcovers that did the Kickstarter and shit. I ordered mine from Amazon um, UK, and I still got two of the three slip covers i was like that's crazy i don't use the slip covers for the 88 films i take them all off because i like the way they look better without the slip covers because they they didn't put the numbers on the sides and shit it's weird weirdness but plus i don't have all of them ocd kicks in so i have a shitload of these i have like probably 30 fucking slip covers now that i'm not using but maybe i'll get rid of them one day but anyways that is going to do it for the update guys Thank you for sticking in there this this long. If you're still here, I doubt very many people are because it is what it is. So I will check you guys uh, very, very soon. I do have some new videos coming up very shortly. So we'll be getting to those. And uh, as usual, man, yeah, deuces. <laughs> My voice is totally gone. Deuces. <laughs>